Welcome back to another episode of Nathan Reads. Today we're going to jump back over to the book that I'm reading currently by John Piper called Reading the Bible Supernaturally. And the portion of the book I'm going to share with you today is something very simple, something very fundamental, but it's a great reminder. So let's jump right in. Piper says, talking about how to derive meaning from the biblical text. So here we go. Piper says, so meanings, once they are written down, are fixed in that writing. The meaning of a text never changes. That is, what the author intended to communicate is a once-for-all historical event, and the past cannot be changed. That meaning can have constantly changing applications in different times and cultures, but the meaning, the intention of the author, stays the same. This is why God, through the Bible, can have authority over us. We can't impute meanings to the Bible as a way of escaping the teachings that we don't like. They are what they are. It is precisely their unchangeability that lets their divine authority endure from age to age. The meaning of a biblical text is what the author intended to communicate by his words. And reading is what you do to find that intention. The ordinary aim of reading is to grasp what the author intended to communicate by his words. The implications of this are life-changing. You will never go to the Bible again simply to see if you can feel inspired by whatever comes to your mind. You will never be content in a group Bible study where the aim is for everyone to say what the text means to you. You will not be excited about a pastor who tells you interesting stories and talks about history and politics and psychology and personal experience, but never shows you what the biblical authors intended to communicate in particular text. Instead, you will make every effort to read the Bible in a way that opens the intentions of the authors and inspires you with that. You will seek to see and savor Sorry, you will seek to see and savor God through that. You will love small group Bible studies where everyone is helping each other see aspects of the text that bring out more and more of what the author really meant. You will give God thanks for every sermon that shows you what the biblical authors actually meant. And yes, in your personal reading and group study and sermon listening, you will seek to apply the meaning to your life, in your circumstances, and your world. And the power of that application will increase with the confidence that it is based on real, objective, unchanging meaning that is really there. So, end quote there. I think this is so simple, yet so profound. I know that we all have been guilty of going to a biblical text and wondering what am I going to feel about this and not really actually thinking what does the biblical author intend to communicate. And I believe if we start there with that fundamental, with that um, structure, if you will, that way we don't go off course into some crazy heretical thoughts that are really non-biblical. And if we come back to the fundamentals of thinking and interpreting and discerning to understand what the actual biblical author meant. I think this is a great reminder. So if you are reading your Bible on an ongoing basis, or maybe you go to church, think about this as a mindset, as a posture, before you even approach the text. And really seek to understand what the author is trying to tell you. Just in the way a friend who wrote a letter to you, you're trying to understand what they're intending to communicate, not what you want to just imagine out of the text. So I thought that would be a good reminder for all of us here today. Whether you are a Christian and you read your Bible and you're wanting to increase that and improve in you in your understanding of the biblical text that you may be blessed even further 
in your walk with God, or maybe you're not a Christian and you're just listening by curiosity. Well, when you do, prayerfully, I pray that you do come to read the Bible, that you can approach it in this way, not from things you've heard from here and there and conspiracy theories, but actually seek to understand what the biblical authors intended when they wrote the writings, the scripture. So that's all for today. I do want to mention as a way of a plug here that I do have a coffee company. It's online. The coffee is fresh brewed upon order in California. So it's also free shipping if you're in the U.S. So it's called Hosanna Coffee. That's H-O-S-A-N-N-A coffee.com. And 10% of all of our profits go towards Christian missions. And currently we're supporting opendoors.org. Uh, so you can go check them out and see what they're all about. If you follow us on Facebook at Hosanna Coffee, you'll see a few posts that I've made and can kind of see what it's all about. Mostly it's about supporting uh, persecuted Christians all around the world and helping them continue to bring the gospel, expand the kingdom of God. So if you like coffee, if you love coffee, it's great coffee. It's great tasting coffee, and you'll know that you are supporting a great cause. Um, if you don't like coffee, if someone else you know likes coffee, we have uh, gift cards you can buy for them, and then you'll just be able to email them over to them, and they can use that whenever they want. If you don't know anyone who likes coffee, which that's hard to imagine, you can still uh, support uh, Christian missions through our side by purchasing. We have merchandise. We've got shirts, sweatshirts, notebooks, stickers, things like that. And there's also, if, if you don't want any of that, we have a, just a donate page that you can donate directly. Okay. And uh, just wanted to share that with you uh, because it is something uh, I have on the side and it's just one tiny ministry that we started about a year ago. And it's been slow going, but, um, you know, uh, I pray the Lord does something amazing with it. Um, so I pray that uh, you would go check that out, hosannacoffee.com. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Check us out on uh, on the website there. Uh, but that's really it for today. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. I was having some audio issues yes, uh, last night. I had recorded this podcast three times, and the audio was skipping. And I just wasn't happy with it. I just put it aside and just went about the rest of the night because it was getting late and I didn't want to keep dragging it on. And I knew I had to find a solution, found a solution. So here we are. Hopefully we can get into this groove where all of these episodes are pretty consistent. Uh, I'm aiming to do an episode twice a week. Uh, right now, I think it's Tuesdays, uh, Tuesday night and Saturday morning. So I'm, I'm not going to put anything in stone, right? I don't want to pigeonhole myself. Life gets crazy. Uh, but that's my aim right now, is to continue sharing things that I'm reading. Obviously, we've gone a lot through that J.C. Ryle holiness, and uh, there's going to be a lot more of that because I'm about just shy of 100 pages left, and I'm sure there's going to be great things that I want to share with you there. And the same thing here. Uh, this this Piper book is almost 400 pages, and I'm just under 100 pages left, so I'm sure there'll be uh, a few more episodes uh, where I'm talking about both of these books, and then I don't know what I'm going to read next. So I'm excited about that, excited about continuing to share things with you. If you have something that you'd like me to read, if you have uh, something you want to share with me, ask me uh, whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, you can email me, all of that at nathanreadspodcast at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you. So I'll wrap it up there. I look forward to sharing, reading, and sharing something new with you very soon. And until then, I pray that you are blessed.